Hello everybody and welcome back to another video of Heroes of the Storm. Today we are continuing our How to Bruise series in Villain the Pawn, D.Va. Pulling up the list here, you'll see that I have D.Va in the tanky slash wave clear category. Right next to Dihaka and Rexar. So why would you want to pick her over these two heroes? Well, she is not as tanky as a Rexar, and she is not uh, as good at clearing waves as a Dihaka because she lacks the global ability. So what makes her outshine? Well, out of the two other heroes in this list, she uh, doesn't have a big weakness, whereas uh, Rexar compared to Dihaka is going to lack that wave clear and the Haka compared to Rexar is going to lack that tankiness. Diva doesn't really lack either of those. Um, but she's also not as good as the other two at their best point. So she's really just a pick that you want when you want a solid, consistent hero that you can throw in a lane. And she can do well in that minion wave, well at double soaking, and well in the team fight. But she's not going to be exceptional in any of those instances. She's definitely a niche hero and kind of hard to get the hang of, so I'll do my very best to explain her to you guys inside of the game. Uh, so we might as well hop right into it and hopefully have some fun. All right, and we find ourselves on the battlefield of eternity today. Going and uh, checking out this skin, it is the... <clears throat> How would I explain this? I forget the name of the skin, but it's out of all the skins, probably my favorite. It's really nothing special. I just like the uh, golden look of it. It kind of reminds me of the golden guns from Overwatch, which I did enjoy that game uh, quite a bit in my previous days. As always, we're going to talk about the build and, uh, and talents at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. But since we have time, I'm going to talk about Liquid Coaling over Full Metal over full metal at level 1. So I pick up Liquid Coaling because this is a consistent talent. And consistency is key on this hero. Yes, full metal... I want to call it full metal jackal, jacket. It's just called full metal. Uh, statistically, can give you infinite healing. If you have something to auto attack, you don't always have something to auto attack. And when you're auto attacking something, you're often trading health. Whereas liquid cooling can heal you out of combat. And that is really quite big uh, for a hero in this game. Kind of reduce the damage of this as well as get our... Uh, stuff rolling up so one thing to keep about on diva keep in mind on diva is your this is not going to fare well for me is it you are a tanky hero and tanky heroes tend to be really good at giving non-tanky heroes or uh or just stacking heroes in general the stacks that they want i'm gonna do my best to clear out the minion wave here so you got to keep in mind about that, about the fact that you're going to be feeding heroes stacks if you let them. So don't let them uh, stack off of you if you can help it. So we're checking the tab screen to see who has what. Uh, looks like Artanis did not go for his stacks. Make sure we don't get hit by these shenanigans. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna lose this trade in this burst fight here. Reduce the damage. Oh, my ally's healing me. Nice. But what I was gonna say is even if we lost that trade in the burst fight. Guess what we have back up already? Liquid cooling. Every 50 seconds is really not that long of a cooldown. And it can help out a hero a large amount uh, in, in playing well and staying inside of a lane. Checking to make sure that uh, Abathur's not putting any more things inside of my lane. We'll auto attack this kid. He gets the Abathur hat. He's been getting a little bit more consistently than I have. Uh, be, as this is an Abathur mirror, but that's all right. Making sure we don't feed him stacks. He's out of mana. I am full on energy nearly. I have a heal, a massive heal in just 20, 20 short seconds. Um, I have a get out of jail free card with my E. Kind of reduce the damage that this does to my buildings. Uh, if you didn't know that, your your W does reduce the damage of the hero. So it doesn't matter if he's attacking X, Y, or Z. Uh, it's going to reduce the damage of it as long as you have your W on top of them. And now, uh, where their hero is having to reset, I can just chillax. And I can now maybe go for this camp and play around this for a moment. Make sure I line up my uh, my abilities or, or my auto attacks to, to hit everything. We will have to use our self-destruct if an enemy hero appears. Looks like we'll be fine to fight another day. We'll use our great wave clear. 
uh, to continue to clear out the minion waves here. Once again, if we take unnecessary damage, it's not the end of the world because we can heal up in just 11 seconds. Didn't that come pretty quickly? Whack! Oh, I missed my whack. All right, here we go. Big heal starting to roll in. Uh, hopefully, Brightwing can use her Z on one of my allies or myself and keep us healthy for this fight. It would probably be better off if I was out there defending. Oh, no. Um, we kind of lack, in this game in particular, the clear to uh, to keep up with Zul'jin and Artanis. So I think we will have to defend this first objective. <clears throat> but might as well get as much damage out there as we can. Yeah, we just, we pale in comparison to them at this current stage of the game. Don't really want to fight, so we will uh, we'll back out. And group with my allies, because... As D.Va, you do actually have some pretty good teamfight presence, all things considered. We'll reduce the damage at these heroes deal. And run away for sweet life. Have our self-destruct up and ready to use uh, if bad things happen. We, Like I said, I like using this as a get-out-of-jail-free card. Like right here, I'll probably use it to protect my ally after I reduce some damage of red team here. Press my E. That'll force them out and get us a pretty easy clear on this objective. Uh, I'm I'm happy with that much clear that we did, so I'm going to rotate top now and start pushing this, which, by the way, that camp we took from earlier is still pushing. Now, it's not going to matter because Red Team does have Mule, uh, which is broken, and it's going to make our life sad overall because, like I said, D.Va is, in a way, similar to Thrall about winning small a bunch of small fights, which transition into uh, winning a lot of... Or, or winning a whole game. You're dead. You're dead. Okay, cool story. <clears throat> if you don't know your Q, it uh, allows you to kind of like, uh, what would be the word? Pierce through enemy heroes? We'll just run away from that as not to give Zul'jin more stacks than he needs. And we'll hide in our base. No issues at all. Maybe ping danger for my ally because there's quite a few enemy heroes here. And red team could rotate up to hurt her. Him, Abathur. Uh, we'll just poke him around a little bit. We want to get our self-destruct charge back up if we can. And we do this by the different talents that we have picked. Oh, a stun would have been nice. That's fine, though. Make sure to reduce some of the damage that Asmodan's dealing. Because, like I said, we want to be having our self-destruct up, around, uh, up and ready to be used for every objective possible. Start to auto-attack that hero. I'm fine with this. This gives me so many stacks. Thank you, friend. We got our heal up and ready to go. So we're full HP for this fight. Whereas this kid is dead. Look at that. Um, I think we will have to defend. We don't quite have our um, self-destruct up or our heal up. So fighting now is not ideal. But I'm hoping from the damage I'm going to take... The damage I'm going to take from red team, I will... Have enough uh, energy to use my E. Looks like I'll get it here. Once again, though, you see red team's burst damage on the objective is very good. Ours is too, but we had a slight slight lead uh, going into that. We got to the objective a little bit faster than they did. Looks like objective does switch. Uh, I don't think I'm that helpful overall when it comes to fighting and pushing in the objective. So reduce some of the damage that red team's dealing here i think i might have saved an ally uh we'll just we'll get out as much damage as we can there peeling wise i think friendly team can can finish that off right or do they they might need me hmm do i just suicide for this yeah we're gonna die here but i think we also capture it right no, we don't even quite get it. Well, that opened up a window for Nazebo. He places his ult. We'll get the objective capped with that then. And despite us losing uh, our life, I think it was worth it. Like I said, Diva's meant to be like queen consistency, uh, whereas Thrall is king consistency. So dying is never ideal. But in preventing them from pushing in this objective and, and, and getting the objective, we have successfully defended against red team in a sense. 
We'll go to the off lane to uh, re-accumulate that XP that we have just lost due to our deaths and pick up Bunny Hop. Uh, micro Missiles, I've never been able to do well with it. I've seen in the however many years diva has been out, one player do it with it, you know? So, there's that. Uh, Mule is on both sides. I'm, I'm just now looking, so I don't know if this game will ever end. Whoever gets the first keep might just win the video game. We'll clear out some of Abathur's shenanigans. Get our heal ticking. We're getting uh, good damage out there on top of the buildings. With a Nazebo ult, we might get more done, which could be nice. Mm, but red team is rotating in. I don't quite have my R. I'm going to press hold. We're dead. That's a shame. It's a, a very big shame. Uh, like I said, if, if we get that building, it's worth it, but I don't think we will. I uh, was trying to peel the enemies back, which in hindsight, I should have ran at them because I think that would have bought Nazebo just enough time to kill this. But now, red team will heal that right back up. We're going to say Mule for my allies so that they know Mule is uh, in use. It's probably healing top lane. Probably one of these lanes that will heal in a second. Uh, and unfortunately, I got caught, caught with my pants down. Not having myself destruct up is game over in most scenarios. Paying for some assistance because we got to keep this building alive. Mule is now ticking to heal that building for, for red team. Uh, I'll try to, to block out the damage that they're dealing here, but I really don't think it's going to matter. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, yeah, Red Team gets that building captured for themselves. Uh, they're using ults. I would have liked for that not to have gone as poorly as it did. I'll press my R button. Maybe we can catch one of these heroes in it and get good damage out there. But that's all it's going to be is just good damage. We really got to finish off this building. Nazebo's here. We got the Abaclone in. So we'll trade one for one on the buildings. Uh, I'm even going to go ahead and ult here. I thought friendly team was going to go forward. Maybe with Nazebo clone, we get something. Or Abathur clone, we get something. Not quite. Uh, I, I would have to base if I went for full metal at level 1. But I went for liquid cooling so I can actually stick around and take this fight. Uh, I should have thought about which one I wanted. Probably go for... Yeah, against that team, we'll go for defense locked. Blocking out as much damage as we can. Doubt it will really matter. She doesn't have blink heal up. Uh, or she never picked blink heal, I should say. So going near her is loss. Good dunk by red team. Same thing. Reduce as much damage as possible on top of these enemy heroes. Uh, maybe get something more done here. Well done by my ally. Uh, what's that hero's name? Valera getting us another kill. You'll love to see it. 82% uh, on my... On my charge. My 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 big booming charge. See if we can't maybe kill a puppy here. We get a kill on top of the puppy. We're going to look for a little bit more. That's just a clone, unfortunately. We'll get a bunny hop rolling on top of the Azodan hero. Chasing him down with the help of friendly team. We'll get the pick that we oh so covetly need needed. Activate my liquid cooling so I can heal a little bit more. Get stunned by the objective, which is a major setback for me. See if we can't maybe tank for my allies and slow down the uh, the Artanis player. Unfortunately, he's just so dang tanky. I got caught by that? No way. No way. I'm bad at this video game. And I don't feel like I can show this footage because I'm so bad. I do apologize for that team. Regardless, though, you can see we're top stats everywhere on the board. We have top soak, top hero damage, and top siege. Um... As well as we've been able to protect my allies a wee bit by using our defense matrix as much as possible. Additionally, due to the way I've built, we have only, I think it's only 50% until we uh, are able to activate our self-destruct again, which is a big ability. Keep that in mind. We've done a fantastic job of not letting Zul'jin stack too much on top of me. He only has 23 stacks at the, excuse me, at the 12 minute mark. And that's with him going recklessness at level 1. Which gives him double the stacks, essentially. Uh, same thing. I think I'm just going to have to play defensively right now. This is not a whole lot that I can do on the map. Other than uh, watch my objective die. And watch the building get healed up by the Abathur Mule. Which is broken, by the way. 
Yep, good siege on top of it. I really hope red team isn't wise and just attacks our uh, our top fort because they could probably get it right now with Zuljin siege. Let me just clear these walls out for my allies. We are getting rotated on. If that swap lands, I don't think I could even save my ally. Right wing in the top lane with an Abathur hat taking that camp. So fighting here would be suicide. I don't even want to stand where I was standing. We'll head, head on to the top lane. Trade uh, camps and hopefully hit level 16 before red team does because they are ahead on experience, unfortunately. Remember, as the bruiser, it is your uh, job to be soaking. And if your team is behind on XP, it is because you are failing them. I don't think we get anything good happening here. Yes, that is the death of an ally. And we're going to pick up uh, Diverting Power. One of my favorite talents in the game for this hero. Uh, or in the in general, one of my favorites. Oh, we got top. Okay, we got top. So we trade top for... Uh, for what? We're going to activate this just to ensure red team doesn't get uh, crazy things happening. We get the kill on... On top of their Rhaegar as well. And we're doing our best. Run. Run, 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 my friend. Make sure this hero gets slowed. He does trade much better into me than I do into him. I gotta stop his heal. So we're gonna just tap him real quick. Uh, ping for some assistance here. We got our, our heal up just now. Well done by my uh, friendly team. Getting good pushes. We're, and my Abathur helping me out as well to keep me nice and healthy. Uh, we're going to rotate towards the objective, I suppose. Although clearing this out, uh, does sound quite responsible as well. Just so that this, um, catapult in particular doesn't cause mayhem on top of my buildings. And it'll give my Abathur time to clear and clean up the rest of the lanes. Nice pick by my ally on top of the Abathur. Hopefully that'll help us out here in the, uh, the near future. We're gonna start a slowing ability on top of these enemy heroes. As well as try to get a, uh, try to get anything up. I have a heal in one second, so we're looking for that. There we go. We get it up and off cooldown. I need to have my, my self-destruct up and ready any second now. See if we can maybe kill an Asmodan. Uh, we didn't quite kill him, but we've, we've done good enough. I'm gonna have to leave this, though. The main reason I have to leave is because of how crappy top lane is looking. I need to defend this so Abathur can mule it. I'm trying to think of what's the best course of action. I guess just auto attack this down and pray that minions focus me instead. Look, hit me. Hit the shiny diva. Please hit the shiny diva. No, my, my uh, efforts are for loss. Start to reduce this hero's uh, hero damage. I doubt it'll be enough to defend my objective, especially with how uh, boop him into the stun. That, that'll help a little bit. Am I dead? I gotta be ready to activate my R. I should have done that sooner. Mm. Try to get my abilities back up. We'll focus down the Artanis because I think... Oh, not with that we don't. I, was gonna say, I think we, we can just auto attack him to death. Oh, that's a lot of damage. I'm going to trust my healer to heal me. Although one more dunk kills me. I better I better just get back in this. It'll be the safer option. Once again, we get an objective. They get an objective. It gets cleared. It doesn't do any building damage and... Uh, or meaningful building damage, at least. And we're right back to where we were. So I'm fine with how this is going. The issue is they have two heroes that stack very well into the late game with Zul'jin and Azrodan infinitely stacking gonna rotate up and maybe go for top camp here uh level 20 will be hit for red team in one moment another nice pick by my uh valera player she has so many of those i'm sure six picks lovely you love to see it we'll get this camp rolling once again you see i'm still top stats for the team currently get that capped out and uh hopefully friendly team doesn't just die with whatever it is that they are doing we're going to pick up uh, a talent that allows us to heal off of the spell damage that we take. 
which can be helpful, especially against Azmodan. Uh, but really, all of her level 20s are... Uh, they're good in their own scenarios, but D.Va does struggle against auto-attackers more than she struggles against other heroes that deal spell damage. She definitely does better against spell damage heroes. Uh, I'm not sure where Zul'jin is. I, I am betting... Okay, I was going to say, I'm betting he went for this camp. Where did he go? I don't know. Okay, there he is. Ping, they're on our way. Uh, I'm trying to get here to protect my ally. Oh, there's two of them. Okay, I didn't realize. I thought we had Rhaegar killed. I guess it was the Abathur that we had killed. Uh, that little bit of peeling we were able to push out protects my ally long enough. We gotta activate my one ability. Just to start, start healing a little bit. That hit me. Quite unfortunate. Clear out this camp, but red team is in a much better position than we are to start this objective, unfortunately. Thankfully, we have a brand new HP bar ready to be used just by pressing our E button. So I should look for that as soon as possible. We'll reduce some damage that that red team's able to deal. And try to just keep on their back. <clears throat> oh, our objective's already dead. I thought I was doing a good job, but... I suppose not. Not in the slightest. Activate my E. Uh, it'll actually deal some damage on top of Red Team's healer. If we get the pick there, that would be massive. We don't quite uh, land what we need, unfortunately. And with, with Red Team's level 20s, I doubt we'll get anything else done. We'll reduce the damage that these heroes can deal. Uh, and activate my 1 as we run. Nazebo is pushing the objective, but unfortunately we are also losing... Um, on the, in the top lane. We're, we might have that just gone all the way. Unfortunately. If I stick around and auto-attack this down, I don't even think we have enough to, to clear it out. Um, so we're gonna lose probably two buildings here. Can, if I'm being completely honest. Unless Valera can maybe get some, some fun shenanigans done. We'll auto-attack, auto-attack, auto-attack. Uh, that zombie wall is in a lovely position to trap the Asmodan player and also get good damage out there on, the, on some of the other enemy heroes. Once again, reducing the hero damage that they are dealing on top of my allies. Boop these enemies back a little bit. I don't know if that'll be enough to save my allies. There's a good swap by the Artanis player. Well, we're going to activate our one early here just to ensure that we don't, uh, don't die to wild poke damage. Reduces damage. I don't know if reducing his damage saved my ally hero's life, but we're going to pretend that it did. We'll turn on the Artanis player now. And with the help of my ally, we might be able to chase down and get another kill. Unfortunately, our building uh, core is getting attacked from all directions. So I'm going to have to retreat and help my allies defend against this as poor Nazebo has been left to uh, defend all alone against a rather healthy immortal whenever it was attacking it. But that is a triple kill. And maybe we can get a keep with that. Uh, because if we have our Nazebo player do so much as sneeze near their core, I think he one-shots it. Unfortunately, we do have to kill keeps before that uh, time comes. But I don't know. I don't know if we have what it takes, if I'm being completely honest. I got to clear out this, this minion wave. And then I got to go for that camp. And do all of that before red team revives. I should have or will have my self-destruct back up and ready to use. So we will look for that. If bad things happen, we'll stand in our, our regular spot to get this pushed nicely. Um, yeah, there are... Azabdan isn't even fully stacked yet, and he is hurting, let me tell you. Kind of a bad rotation there by myself. I could have gotten caught and killed. But I say that as... Okay. <laughs> I was going to say as Nazebo is overextending, but that was just a Nazebo clone, so all is good. Red team might be looking for their camp in a moment. Oh, no. See if I can't protect my allies. She is in a tricky predicament. Uh, two of my allies are, that is. Do what we can to slow red team. I'm going to need to activate my R as to make sure that I don't die now. We have a big, chunky hitbox. Which is a blessing and a curse from time to time. 
Hopefully with the help of Valir, we can get good damage out there on top of some red team, some of red team's heroes. That's a lot of good damage out there on top of a lot of those heroes, but unfortunately it's not enough to get done what we need. That's some big damage on a lot of heroes. Activate our E and I need to get my Q up and ready to run any moment now. There we go. Really good peels by my ally. Unfortunately, um, our building is, or, or our objective is taking a large amount of damage. And with the death of my two allies, all I can do, I suppose, is push a different lane. And, and base race. Like, is that, is that our only option? Because there's no way I can fight them currently. Yeah, I think this is my, my literal only play. Is distract enemy heroes and pray that Nazebo can, can defend. Whenever the, uh, the time comes that we have to be defending. Man. Well, we will base. We stalled for Nazebo and Valera, but I really don't think it's enough. Yeah, GG has been called. If we're going to defend against this, it's going to be something we have to start defending, like, right here. And hit it, hurt it the whole way down the minion wave. And that's assuming we don't get backdoored along the way. As you see, Artanis uh, forming in the bottom lane there. All right, we are going to have to be the one to, to base. I think the core is already gone. I don't even think I can base in time to defend it. Let's see if we can't, can't stop the damage of some of these heroes or better yet have them distracted and attacking me. We'll make sure that our uh, object or our ability goes out on top of something that it might hurt. No. Nope, it's over. Unfortunately. Well, you can see, though, that D.Va is yet a powerful hero. Despite us losing that game, we were able to get top siege in the game, top hero damage in the game, and second most soak in the entire game. <clears throat> I said, it's definitely a shame we couldn't pull that off and get the win, but it is what it is. Uh, we will go deep diving into the build that we went and other builds that you can go with this hero. I did kind of trash on the full metal uh, talent at level one but there are builds you can go that do make it better and more viable so uh at level one we went for liquid choline what this does is it removes your sippy cup not that it removes your sippy cup but it puts your sippy cup on an activatable ability that you can use anywhere on the map and then additionally it will heal you for more and additionally it will um have a shorter cooldown of 50 seconds it's just such a good ability to spam out and allow you to, excuse me, allow you to um, be on the battlefield at all times. We then went for nuclear option. So hitting your self-destruct, uh, hitting your mech while it's self-destructing with your big shot, your R on Baby Diva, will make it self-destruct 50% faster, which oftentimes surprises enemy heroes. And lets you really burst them quickly. Additionally, it allows you to regenerate your uh, self-destruct a little bit faster. Because this is mainly a self-destruct focused build. At level 7, we pick up Fusion Generator. So every time uh, your de self-defense matrix uh, blocks... I believe it has to be enemy hero damage. Yeah, every time it blocks enemy hero damage, it gives you a charge of... Uh, it gives you 1% of your charge up to a maximum of 20, your charge on your self-destruct. Once again, allowing you to use your self-destruct more op often. <clears throat> and then additionally, while at full self-destruct charge, your auto attacks deal bonus damage increased by 100%. I'm not going to lie with you. I did not know that passive part of the talent existed. But there's that. <clears throat> so moving on. Bunny Hop, because like I said, Micro Missiles is really quite underwhelming, and Bunny Hop can help you lock down some enemies oftentimes. Not the most crazy good ability in the game, but out of the two ults, it's what I like in most scenarios, and it can be useful with the Unstoppable. Uh, it allows you to ca cancel out things like a Mosh Pit, um, or stick to heroes who are trying to get away. It, it, it's just, it's mid. Uh, target locked at level 13. There's a couple different things you can go at 13. Uh, if you are going for a more ranged build, like if the enemy team is <clears throat> a little harder to stick to, and you kind of have to play safer because you're getting bursted too easily, you can go for a uh, 
big shot build, and this is where you pick up that talent. But for now, we went for target locked. And so what it does is it slows enemy heroes who are inside of your defense matrix, as well as reduces their armor while they are inside of your defense matrix. Allowing you to peel better for your allies and set up for your allies better by allowing them to turn the tide of battle by fighting inside of defense matrix, making you super duper um, valuable to your allies inside of team fights with this talent. It's very strong. The numbers don't seem that big, but it ends up being super helpful. Uh, at level 16, we went for diverting power. So our W, every time we take damage, it'll now heal D.Va by 35%. Every time we take damage uh, from a target whose damage is reduced by our defense matrix. So if Azodan is inside of defense matrix, uh, we put our W, our, our, you know, it's out there on him. And he presses his Q, a globe. And that globe hits you, dealing thousands of damage, you'll get healed for 35 But... If a Tychus is auto-attacking you inside of a um, defense matrix, you'll get healed for 35 per instance of that auto-attack, which ends up being 35 uh, four times in a second. It's really strong. <clears throat> Especially if you have all of the enemy heroes inside of your defense matrix, which is much easier to do whenever you have diverting power because it greatly increases the area of your defense matrix. Keep all this in mind that you are now more tanky with your defense matrix. You are now healing with your defense matrix. It's in a bigger area with your defense matrix. It is reducing armor of enemy heroes. It is slowing enemy heroes. And it's giving you more self-destruct charge. And that self-destruct charge is increasing your basic attack damage. Do you see how well this build can flow together? It's lovely. And then the cherry on top is... Uh, at level 20, we pick up this ablative armor. I definitely butchered that, but it's late and I don't care. So 45% of spell damage uh, dealt to D.Va's mech is returned as healing over 4 seconds. Meaning most mages against D.Va become useless. Especially whenever you're healing off of uh, your diverting power and reducing the damage they're dealing with it. You just become such a tanky fiend. Pop that on top of having a second HP bar by activating your self-destruct, which you should have up a lot. It's just, mm, ah, I really do love this hero. With that being said, though, she does get outshined in some cases. Like, for instance, had I been playing someone like a, uh, like a Rexar, maybe, I might have been able to help deal with the Zul'jin better. Or had I been playing a... Dahaka, maybe I would have been able to control the map better and push lanes out further. Who knows? Regardless, I had fun. I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. I hope you learned something in today's video. Uh, please do not forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.